Hey friends, welcome to the Push Patterns channel. My name's Craig. In this video, we're gonna be discussing what the IAC driver is, where we can find it on our Mac, how to get it set up. Most importantly, what is it? What's the point in it? Why do we need this amazing tool in our lives? Let's jump in and find out. First thing we're gonna to need to do is set it up. So what we need to do is we need to go to Finder. We need to go to Applications, then down to Utilities open up in there and we go to something that says audio MIDI setup double click and something like this should open up as a default opens up your audio settings but if you go up to here it says window we go show MIDI studio this will show all the MIDI devices that you have connected to your computer there is one here that says the IAC driver to enable it we just simply double click open up and put device is online bingo so this is where we can go in we can change the name of it if we wanted to or add more bus ports. That's basically like having more MIDI leads. So it's like having more MIDI controllers essentially. So that's done. We're on a setup. Not too bad. Hey, that's pretty easy. So what is the point in this IAC driver? I, I hear you cry. Basically, it's like an internal MIDI controller. We can have clips or MIDI clips within Ableton Live control things within Ableton Live. So just like if you have a MIDI controller like the Akai MPK Mini, you press a button to turn something on, we can have a MIDI clip in Ableton Live turn something else on. So this is great for live looping. So we've seen artists such as Fred again, Ed Sheeran, those sort of people where something they magically record a clip and then the clip turns off automatically. That's probably done with the IAC driver. So let's look at now how we set this up in Ableton Live. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to our preferences. So first thing we do is open up preferences, which is command comma. We're gonna go down to link MIDI and now your IAC driver should show up. What we're gonna do on the input, we're gonna turn remote on, and output, we're gonna turn track. So it basically means whenever we have a MIDI clip that has the IAC driver, we want it to send out MIDI notes to then use the IAC driver to remotely control things, essentially. And that's it, so that's set up. You don't need any other settings. And so we're gonna to go to a MIDI clip here and we're gonna put the output to IAC driver. And with this IAC driver, you have up to 16 channels. Okay, so it's on channel one. Let's um, make a, a MIDI clip. And what I wanna do is essentially, I want to have this MIDI clip turn on record um, on this channel. So I want it to record a clip and then say after four bars, stop recording this clip. A bit like fixed length on the push. Now, anyone that's used a push knows fixed length is an amazing thing, it's an amazing tool, but it's really annoying we don't have that within Ableton Live. So this is something where we can get over that. So the MIDI note will still adhere to the one bar launch quantization. So if we want it to start on say beat two, we would need to launch it somewhere in the, the previous bar so we can't just launch it on beat two because then it will wait for a whole beat so with that in mind what we're going to do is go in here and we're going to make this midi clip we're going to make it we're going to make it five bars long so basically what that means is i'm going to press play and then we're going to have a midi note i'm going to put this right at the top on beat four start the loop here so that's going to be on that would be where the loop would start recording and then record for four bars and then on the E I'd have it turn off here okay so now we need to MIDI map it to here so one of the problems that we'll come across here is we go command M to go into MIDI map mode and then we press play on our clip we can't play because we're in MIDI map mode damn it so what we can do is come up MIDI map mode if we go to key and I just map this to one so it will play like that and then I can stop it um, it stops because I have my clips as a default set up to toggle. So that means just off and on essentially. So that's set up. So now when we go into MIDI map mode, look, this still works. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm just gonna put on here, this, I'm gonna press play here. So that's mapped it now. Okay. So you saw there, I touched it as well and it, it mapped it by accident. So just make sure you turn that off if that happens. So now that's that's mapped. So it's the same MIDI note that will turn it on and turn it off. So you need your 
your clip set up as toggle for this. You can do that as a default if you want to in the record, warp and launch and go down to default launch mode toggle. So now to exit MIDI map mode, press command M again. First thing we need to do is arm the track, set the input. Then with this track here, we need to turn the clip off loop because we don't want it to come back round and start relaunching the clip or playing it. So if we look here, the loop kind of ends after two bars. I can just drag that out to make sure it ends on the fifth bar there. So that's set up. So now as soon as I press play on this, it's going to record a clip there and then just stop ending it. So it started, turned it on, two, three, four, two, three, four. When this gets there, it's going to turn it off again, two, three, four, and it will just start playing back. One, two, three, four, two, three, four. When this gets there, it's going to turn it off again, two, three, four, and it will just start playing it on, two, three. Four. There we go, fantastic. So that's it. So there's loads of possibilities you could do with this. You could essentially have clips turning things off and on. You could have here, this This could go on for like the whole duration of the song. So you could have 113 bars like that. And you could have different MIDI notes turn on different clips all over the place. So you could have a whole looping system going on. So that's the IAC driver. Check it out, especially if you're into audio live looping it is a really good tool for automatically looping clips within session view also works in a range view and also it works in every version of ableton live intro light standard suite hope you found that video helpful don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this hopefully i see you again on this channel again soon bye for now